Our movie today is Terminator Genesis, part of the legendary Terminator franchise. The movie starts with Kyle informing us of a world full of life and beauty, a world he has never known because of Skynet, an AI that destroyed the world using nuclear weapons because humans are a threat to its existence. The survivors dubbed this moment Judgment Day, and they were forced to hide or face extermination. Kyle spent his childhood running away from the machines, until John Connor found him and taught them how to fight back. Connor became a legend among the people. In the present day, Kyle is his right-hand man, and their bond has grown stronger. They plan to storm a hangar and take Skynet's most dangerous weapon. John regrets the death of all the innocents and plans on celebrating when they're done. After John's speech, they infiltrate the hangar and surprise attack the machines. Skynet deploys one of their newer Terminator and intends to use the new weapon. John knows this, so he recklessly storms in. The Colorado unit succeeds, and Skynet shuts down, but they can't celebrate, because Skynet has just used a time machine and sent the Terminator to 1984 Los Angeles to kill John's mom, Sarah Connor, thus eliminating his existence and preventing the resistance from ever forming. Due to his knowledge about the history of the Connor family, Kyle volunteers to go back and save Sarah. John informs him that during the 1990s, Sarah was a waitress and not a warrior, so he must convince her by talking about fate and her strength. As Kyle is shifting to the past, a Skynet infiltrator disguised as a resistance soldier attacks John. This triggers a temporal paradox, altering the chronology and causing Kyle to remember his youth from a parallel version of himself. He is in the woods then, with his family celebrating his birthday, and receives an important message. Genesis is Skynet, removing Genesis means destroying Skynet before it is born. In 1984, Skynet's Terminator is attacked by the older version, called Pops. The newer model shrugs off bullets and overpowers Pops. It is about to crush him, but Sarah Connor snipes it in the heart. In the meantime, a policeman chases Kyle through an alley, but it turns out to be a Terminator. Kyle shoots it and hides in the mall. It quickly finds him, and he is forced to flee. He gets arrested by two real cops, who laugh at his story about a human machine. The Terminator shoots a cop and then charges them. A huge truck appears and rams the Terminator, it's Sarah. She takes Kyle, but the Terminator plants a tracking device on him. Kyle discovers that Sarah knows his identity and his objective, and that the timeline he was sent to change no longer exists. Upon seeing Pops, Kyle opens fire, despite Sarah urging him not to. Pops knocks him out to spare time. He tells Sarah that she must mate with Kyle, and their offspring will be John. Sarah wants to fall in love first, and asserts her free will. Kyle has flashes from his childhood, and his younger self urges him to destroy Genesis. Kyle wakes up and wants some answers. Sarah explains that Pops was sent to 1973 by an unknown source to guard Sarah after her parents were slain by a T-1000, deployed by Skynet when she was nine years old. Pops destroys the tracking devices and reaffirms that he is old but not obsolete. Sarah tells Kyle that the mission has changed, she does not need saving, and she plans to change the past by destroying Skynet before it even exists. Kyle recalls his dreams, but the Terminator interrupts them. They repeatedly shoot it, and then Kyle blows it up with a rocket, which impresses Sarah. The Terminator regenerates and continues its hunt. Kyle and Sarah disagree about future events. He tells her about John being attacked by a machine just as he left, which doesn't make sense. The Terminator arrives and impales Pops, then reanimates the T-1000, which Kyle blasts with a rocket, singeing its skin. It keeps chasing him around until he electrocutes it and blasts its head off. Sarah flees through the tunnels and arms herself. She notices acid leaking from tanks above her. Two Kyles show up, and one of them is the Terminator. Sarah makes a wild guess and then shoots the tanks above the Terminator. The acid melts its body and weakens it. Pops appears and pushes it under the acid, until it completely disintegrates. She reveals to Kyle that they have been preparing for this attack, because they don't want to leave any future tech once they go. Sarah and Pops have built a rudimentary time machine similar to Skynet's. They used a chip from the Terminator to power it up. Pops suffered external damage when fighting the T-1000, preventing him from time traveling. Sarah intends to exterminate Skynet by traveling to 1997, the year it becomes self-aware. Kyle, though, is persuaded that the future has changed, since the timeline has been altered. He talks about his family and the things he has seen, then recalls a warning he got as a boy, telling Sarah that they must instead travel to 2017 to fight Skynet. Sarah disagrees, so Kyle takes the chip, but she draws her gun. He gives her the chip and recites the words about going in a straight line. Sarah is in shock, because those were her dad's last words. She agrees with Kyle. As they prepare, Sarah asks about her son. He tells her about John being a leader and icon of hope as he watches her shadow undress, and then promises to keep her safe at all costs. Sarah is about to tell him about John's father, but Pops interrupts them, stays in 1984, and prepares to meet up with Kyle and Sarah in the future, while also preparing for their arrival in San Francisco. Sarah and Kyle take the time machine, and vanish in a painful flash of lightning. They appear in the middle of traffic, so Kyle shields Sarah with his own body, but they are arrested by the police. Sarah tells him about her parents' tragic passing her father's last words, and Pops saving her, 
At the police station, Macius, a disgraced cop, has footage of Sarah and Kyle emerging from a sphere, but the detectives call him a drunk and ignore his pleas. At the hospital, Kyle and Sarah learn from a doctor that Genesis is about to go online, and all data will be uploaded to one server. The detectives say that nothing in their database matches Sarah, and Kyle Reese should be 12 years old. Macius shows up and says the two haven't aged since 1984, which confuses the detective. It turns out Macius was the police officer that the duo saved back then. Kyle reveals his identity and then fights with Sarah, but it's a ploy to pick utensils and uncuff themselves. They bicker and flirt over the cuffs until a Homeland representative arrives. It's John. Kyle hugs him, and Sarah is in shock to see her future son. She has doubts because Terminators can shapeshift, and she asks him to prove his identity, so John says Sarah hates lullabies and wants to sing Elton John songs to her kid. She trusts him now, but they must move, because more Homeland security arrives. Pops walks into the hospital with a huge teddy bear and tracks Sarah and Kyle's whereabouts. In the parking lot, John inadvertently reveals that Kyle is his father, which leads to an awkward moment. Pops shows up and blasts John repeatedly with a shotgun, revealing his identity as a Terminator. John regenerates and reveals that Skynet, in physical disguise as a Terminator, was the resistance soldier that assaulted John. Skynet attacked John and infected him with machine phase matter as Kyle was going back in time. John, charged with guaranteeing Skynet's creation, travels back in time to help Cyberdyne Systems construct Genesis, ensuring Skynet and its machines rise. Skynet offers them a deal, since it cannot remove John's parents and ensure its existence, because it now needs his body. Pops fights Skynet, he bashes it against a car, then rams it into a wall and continues brawling inside the hospital. Skynet has the upper hand, until Sarah rescues Pops, and Kyle activates the MRI machine and holds it in the chamber. Kyle hesitates, but then abandons John. In the car, Kyle says they must find a way to get John back, but Sarah is doubtful. Pops reveals that Skynet tried these experiments before, the subjects were modified on a cellular level, and there is no cure. John recovers and heads to Cyberdyne to watch the progress of his year's work. Cyberdyne's president confirms that they'll go online in a few hours, and over one billion humans have pre-ordered their product. John communicates with Genesis and promises to keep it safe. Sarah, Kyle, and Pops evacuate to a safe house, a day before Skynet's worldwide strike. Over the years, Pops has collected numerous weapons and gear to help them stop Judgment Day. Pops has kept Sarah's old drawings and her favorite music, and he and Kyle develop mutual respect while reloading magazines. They begin the last preparations to destroy Cyberdyne's Genesis mainframe, using bombs at critical points. Kyle resents Sarah for not revealing his paternity of John. Sarah lashes out by saying that Kyle loses his life protecting her and the baby. Kyle confesses his love, but she is worried that their relationship would lead to D-Day. John appears, and their pleas for him to fight Skynet's hold fail. Kyle keeps reasoning with him, then Sarah blasts him with a grenade launcher. Pops picks up multiple large magnets that will be useful versus Skynet. They take a school bus, just as John bursts through the flames. He chases them on a bike, then jumps on the bus and drags Pops out. He destroys the brakes as the police set up a blockade. Sarah crashes into cars while Kyle tries to find John. He rips out a part of the bus, forcing it to flip in the air, and then violently tumble to the edge of the bridge. Sarah and Kyle barely survive the crash. John creepily chases Kyle as Pops holds the bus in place. Kyle punches John with the magnet, forcing him back. He grabs Sarah just in time before the bus plunges, and Pops pulls them up. Unfortunately, the police arrest them. At the station, they are interrogated. Macias even brings Kyle's family and his younger self, but they're unable to identify him. Pops breaks out, because one of the detectives turns out to be a shape-shifted John. Macias is shot, but he frees Sarah, claiming that he wants to help. They then tell young Kyle and his family to flee. Sarah tells him to run and not look back, while tracing her finger on his palm. Macias allows them to rearm themselves, and Pops finds magnetic shells. They steal a helicopter as John opens fire, they slide sideways and head to Cyberdyne. John chases them with his own helicopter. They evade him until they are hit. Kyle dips under a bridge, allowing Sarah to hit John with a rocket but he regenerates. Pops sacrifices himself by charging into John's chopper, forcing it to crash. Kyle and Sarah meet Skynet as a child, but John accelerates its evolution, turning the hologram into a teenager. John attacks, but Pops impales him. Kyle, Sarah, and Pops plant bombs at key points in the facility and discover that Cyberdyne is building a time machine, as well as machines using Terminator alloy, but they're harmless without a CPU. They split up to plant more bombs, and Skynet distracts them enough for John to attack and stab Sarah in the shoulder. She throws the detonator to Pops and orders him to blow everything and everyone up. Pops refuses because it is against his programming to harm Sarah Connor, but Kyle can press the detonator. John dives in to stop them. He drags Pops deep into the chamber. Pops punches him with the magnets, but gets thrown. Skynet locks Kyle and Sarah out and assumes its adult form, which looks exactly like the man that attacked John in the future. 
Pops is overwhelmed by John's advanced systems. He loses an arm and is thrown against the core. Sarah and Kyle blow up the door and open fire, enough to weaken his armor. Pops punches through John and then lifts and slams him into the time machine. Pops orders Kyle to protect his Sarah, activate the quantum field, and destroy them both. Sarah bursts into tears watching him float, but they must escape. Pops holds John in with what's left of his power. However, shortly before the explosion, Pops remnants are hurled out of the contraption and into a nearby experimental vat of alloy. The massive detonation destroys the labs and all of Cyberdyne's headquarters. Kyle and Sarah hide in a bunker beneath the complex, and the explosion prevents Genesis from being activated. Pops emerges, enhanced with mimetic polyalloy components similar to those found in the T-1000, and assists them escaping the wreckage. Kyle warns his younger self about Genesis, and advises him to repeat the warning to himself, ensuring the trio's arrival from 1984. Sarah and Kyle kiss in front of Pops, then go to the countryside to live peacefully. A mid-credits sequence indicates that the Genesis system core, which is housed in a safe underground room, has survived the explosion.